So the world is in an absolute state of chaos right now. And how does the Israel-Palestine war affect Canadians or North Americans? Well, the answer is that there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of um, Arab people here in North America that are actually standing in solidarity with Palestine, even though the Hamas have brutally attacked you know, women, children, civilians in Israel. And so there's a lot of things to watch out for. And this is a very deep rooted issue that goes back like hundreds of years. So I'm not going to get into the specifics of the, the, the politics between Palestine and Israel. That is a video on its own. And there's way more educated people than I am. I've already made those videos. So I highly encourage that you go out and you explore the internet and try and find like where all of this started and everyone's mad at the British and just a whole bunch of things to focus on. And this is going to be a really memorable Thanksgiving, all for the wrong reasons here in Canada. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you to give a like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. It really helps grow, grow the channel. And I hope you consider turning post notifications on so it adds a layer of insurance to make sure you get notified of upcoming videos. Obviously, I am on the road. I was out of town for Thanksgiving, as many people were visiting family. And so if the audio video is a little lesser quality than normal, I do apologize. But I've got some stuff pulled up. And without further ado, let's get into this. So today we are starting with a pretty gnarly story. Um, Air Canada is actually under fire because this uh, individual right here, most, uh, most, Mustafa, <laughs> Mustafa, Mustafa as though is a pilot with Air Canada flying their, uh, 787s. That, that's the plane that Air Canada flies to Tel Aviv. They should probably keep him off of that route just to be safe. This pilot stands publicly with support of Palestine. This is very scary stuff, folks. We're talking about, you know, I mean, this has already been branded as, the 9-11 of Israel. So this is not to be taken seriously. Um, there's the pilot out and about. And you're probably wondering at this point, what has Air Canada done to uh, rectify this issue? And I mean, when you go through the comments, there's an update. We're going to get to that in a second. They should fire him. Someone's um, you know, political and religious views don't matter. Uh, you're flying a plane. You're flying a plane for a company. And so now that you're involving your support for what's deemed as a terrorist organization, the Hamas. Uh, that is very scary. Someone saying, can we say he's a flight risk? And since this came out by Ezra Levant, uh, who runs Rebel News at 1.12 p.m. Uh, my time, you now have uh, 2.14 p.m. So just about a one hour response from Air Canada saying, we are aware of the unacceptable posts made by an Air Canada pilot. We are taking this matter very seriously, and he was taken out of service on Monday, October 9th. We firmly denounce violence in any forms. And people are very confused as to what that means. Out of service, what does that mean? Uh, if this pilot ever gets another chance to fly into Israel, how can he guarantee he won't go kamikaze on a plane full of passengers? And this is what a lot of people are worried about because there's an overwhelming amount of support for both sides. I mean, there's tens of thousands of people supporting Israel. And, you know, uh, going to Israel protests here in Canada and in the centers of, you know, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal. And I've already have videos that I've made prior to this one with all of that information pulled up. It just got flagged by YouTube. So you're going to get a reverse order. You're getting the second video on this matter first. And then you're going to get the first video that I've already made uh, will come out hopefully later today. Uh, but hopefully YouTube allows me to post it by tomorrow at the very latest. So I'm sorry for the confusion. It's just so crazy. And YouTube is just like, oh my God, what's what? And how do we control this stuff? So it's very crazy. There's a lot of overwhelming support on both sides. A lot of overwhelming support for Israel, but also a very vast amount of overwhelming support for Palestine. And so we're going to take a look at this here. This is Chalo Fun 69 on YouTube, who covered a lot of the Freedom Convoy. And he went down into Toronto and covered the Palestine protests. And these are all people immediately, within like less than 24 hours of the Hamas committing the war crimes and the atrocities that they did on the citizens and the civilians, the innocent people of Israel. These are thousands of people in the streets supporting and what seems to be encouraging them standing up against their oppression because it'd be ignorant to um, non-acknowledge that Palestine has been oppressed by Israel 
but they've stand up against us by bombing and torturing and murdering and all those really radical things um to innocent people and these are people now in canada that are saying yep that's how we do things so if that doesn't scare you well i don't know what the hell will i see uh they're chanting something trudeau now Super chatted five dollars. Jeff, for the sake of all people kind, hope you have winterized your salty boots for this coming thing. XOXO. Now, I imagine uh, Rebel News is probably here somewhere covering it. You are aiding genocide. You are aiding genocide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, country girl, yeah. So a lot of people right now, a lot, a lot of people are kind of stuck in this limbo of who do we support? Are we with Israel because of what happened to them? Are we with Palestine because of what's happened to them in the past? And of course, if you're supporting Palestine right now, you're kind of directly or indirectly supporting the Hamas, which are now listed terrorists and have committed some heinous acts. And so it's very confusing. It's all happening at once. And it doesn't seem like there's any time to process anything. And because this is something that doesn't like involve Canada, Canadian history, Canadian culture, a lot of people are just find themselves in this, like whatever information that they grab onto first. And that's kind of what they support. So if you've now been, you know, if the first thing that you've ever been aware of is the oppression of Palestine and now they're fighting back. I could see how some people would view them as kind of freedom fighters or rebellion, but then you have the Canadian government and governments from around the world saying they're not rebellions, they're terrorists and do rebellions, murder innocent women and children the way that the Hamas did. Obviously not. And so it's it's just all very confusing. It's all happening at once and it's overwhelming because it's taken over social media, it's taken over mainstream media. And that's the new narrative now. Everyone's forgotten about Ukraine. Everyone's forgotten about climate change. And everyone's focusing on this what's been deemed as the 9-11 of Israel. It's very scary stuff. But it's more specifically scary because of how many people are in the streets right here. I mean, this is a, a Travel Fund 16, Travel Guy 69. This did this live stream for two and a half hours. And there are tens of thousands of people in the streets supporting this and the government has listed them as a terrorist group so that means that there are tens of thousands of people in the streets of toronto supporting a terrorist entity or, or i guess being terrorist sympathizers so it's all very confusing and i'm trying to stay out of it the best i can but this is a canadian you know channel and therefore i just feel the need to bring this to your attention in case you've overlooked this or aren't aware of this or have been living under a rock and you're just some for some reason now be notified of my video uh this is all very scary a lot of masked people and people are very worried about any sort of calls of violence that could happen here in north america um the hamas have claimed there's leaked information that the that uh you know uh there's 14 months between uh, any time in the next 14 months, the Hamas will, you know, commit some sort of atrocities here in North America, uh, terrorist acts. So it's it's very confusing. It's all happening very fast. There's communist flags, Palestine flags, flags that are supporting Hamas. Um, I don't think we've ever seen this level of support for what's deemed as a terrorist organization in Canada ever. Even though the Freedom Convoy got listed as what it did. Um, I don't think that there was this many, this much foot traffic this fast, even for the Freedom Convoy. So what you're seeing right now is above and beyond any other protest uh, that's ever occurred here in Canada. I mean, people are on scaffolding, people are on buildings, and it seems like um, there are many, many reasons, multiple reasons to be, um, I guess, a little worried.
uh, about the future of Canada and the state of Canada. And of course, you have our political leaders that have made speeches. Uh, so let's take a look at what Pierre Polyev has to say about uh, what's happened here. It is with a combination of heartbreak and outrage that I join with all of you here today. Heartbreak for the innocent mothers, babies, grandparents, party goers, peace activists who suddenly and inexplicably lost their lives at the hands of an unprecedented terrorist attack and outrage at the attackers. And so, in starting my remarks tonight, let me be explicitly clear. Hamas is not a militant organization. It is not an activist organization. It is surely not a government. It is a sadistic, demonic, genocidal, terrorist death cult. And it must be defeated and destroyed. The incredible carnage that this terrorist death cult has unleashed in the last 72 hours would be bad enough were it not for the apparent pleasure and sadistic pride with which it was carried out. And so I say to those who might not perhaps have strong opinions about the Middle East, what kind of organization would carry out such hideous violence against such obviously innocent people and do it in the most cruel and odious manner and then willingly publicize it for all the world to see? This is evil in its purest form, and that evil must be defeated. Hamas does not speak for the Palestinian people, it does not speak for Muslims, and it surely does not speak for Canadians. And that is why I unreservedly condemn any and all who took part in the disgusting celebrations that we have seen on our streets in the last several days. It is now for Canada to stand with Israelis as they carry out their right and obligation to defend themselves, to provide any support we can and intelligence and in the other way, to ensure there is high quality consular services for every Canadian citizen who may be stranded or in need of any assistance whatsoever. And I know that members of parliament for all parties will be united in that purpose. Uh, Prime Minister. <laughs> Prime Minister, MPP McLeod, MP Aria, Mr. Mayor, I know we will all be working together to frantically bring assistance to any of our Jewish brothers and sisters or people of any other faith who may for any reason be in distress in the Middle East at this time. And I encourage everyone here to donate generously to the beautiful charities who are helping to come to the rescue, charities like Magan David Adam and countless others. Let us all be generous with them in this time. And Canada must call for an investigation into how this attack was so well coordinated. It is clear to me that the regime in Iran has been the greatest actor of evil and terrorism on the world stage, and we must work day and night to defeat that regime. I disagree with one of those last points that Pierre just said, where he says that Canada should call on an investigation to happen. Yeah, 
obviously. But it's not our job, and we shouldn't be spending resources to investigate the matter ourselves. We should be focusing on why the hell it is that we have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that in are living here in Canada that support the Hamas. How did they get here? Why are there so many people that support the Hamas? And if that's the case, then what the hell is going to happen moving forward? And what type of protections is Canada taking to prevent any further terrorist sympathizers from entering or making sure that, I don't know, that Canada doesn't get struck next here domestically? Very scary, folks. It's very, very scary times. And I'd love to pass the question off to you. How do you feel about this? What side are you on? Do you support Palestine fighting the oppression? Do you support what they've done? Do you support Israel? Where do you stand? I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. That's where we're going to end today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.